Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I hope you enjoy the video content. If you do, please give me a big thumbs up. And if you enjoy videos featuring canning and southern cooking, I hope that you'll subscribe. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I can ham hock broth. When I am canning dry beans, I put ham hocks in and I use ham hock broth in place of the water. So what I have set up here is a simple colander and I've lined that with unbleached muslin and the, it's been washed and then I re-wet it um, and I'm going to slowly strain the broth and leave it to drip for about 30 minutes. And everything that was in the, in the Instant Pot has just cooked away to pretty much nothing. And the muslin will catch all of that as it strains. Now I know that there are lots of different things that you can add to beans, but my granny always cooked her beans with smoked ham hock and smoked pork neck. And I happened to get a good deal on ham hocks, so I went ahead and picked them up, but I do this as well with pork neck. I'll debone it and use the bones and the scrap to make broth. And I use the broth to pan my beans. So what I did was I took four smoked ham hocks and I put them in the Instapot with water and covered them and I pressured them on the stew setting for my Instapot twice for 50 minutes. So that's a total of 100 minutes at a pressure of 70 on the Instapot. And then I took them apart and I took out all the meat and I put everything that was scrapped back in and I have filled it up with water and I have been running it on the slow cooker setting um, for 12 hours at a time for the past 36 hours. So what I'm going to do now is I'm straining the broth and I'm going to get it ready for canning. So I'm going to finish getting everything in here and once that's been completed I will bring you back. Okay, it's been a little over 30 minutes and you can see that all the liquid has dripped out. So what we're going to do is we're going to gather up and put all of the scraps over to be tossed. And then I will rinse my muslin and put it in the laundry. And what we are left with is beautiful golden ham hock broth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this into hot jars and can it so when I'm ready for it I'll be able to have it on hand. So I'm going to clean up just a little bit, get everything set up, and I'll bring you back when I start filling jars. So today we are processing hot. So hot, 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 hot ingredients, hot jars, hot canner. I am going to be using my 23 quart Presto pressure canner and I have Check the vent pipe, I've checked the lock, I've checked the gasket and made sure that they're all in good working order. I have added the rack and three quarts of water and I'm going to set that on low so it can start coming up to heat and I will just let it simmer while I get everything ready. Alright, so I got you turned around the other direction and those of you who watch me know that this is my canning space. This is the space that I have available. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transfer this into jars. These jars are hot. They've been st uh, sterilized them and then I put them in the dishwasher to hold. So, they're not super hot, but they're nice and warm. And the broth is still pretty warm. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these to one inch from the top. And visually, that is just pretty much this bottom line right here. The bottom at the neck of the jar. Visually, um, if you have a debubbler, you can use the little scale that is on it to check your headspace if you're not comfortable using visual headspace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these up one inch. When I'm working in broth, I put a dish rag down. It just seems to make cleanup a little bit easier for me. And if I do happen to spill, there's something to catch it before it hits my linoleum floor because I'm a bit of a klutz and let's face it, oily substance on a linoleum floor is an accident waiting to happen in my world. Alright, so I've got those both up to one inch headspace and there's no need to debubble, it's just liquid. So what I'm going to do now, and this is an important step. You want to take a clean paper towel 
I actually take my paper towels and tear them up into little pieces. Um, you want to take a clean paper towel, and I have a small bowl of that has vinegar in it, and I dip that towel into the vinegar, and I clean the rims. Round and round. This also gives you a chance to check for any imperfections, nicks or chips or anything like that that might be in the rim. So you want to clean the rim with vinegar and because it is a meat product and especially because it is a pork product, I actually do it twice. So I have my paper towel piece, back into the vinegar I go and I'm going to clean round and round just to make sure that it is clean. You don't want anything on those rims because that will prevent you from getting a seal. And the seal actually happens with this little pink piece of rubber here. So you want to make sure that nothing that touches that is going to be oily, greasy, have any food or anything on it. That will cause a failed seal. Now, it used to be that you had to simmer these. Always simmer them in hot water. You don't have to do that anymore if you are pressure canning. They decided that that was not necessary. So straight onto the jars they go. And you want to do these finger tight. You want it to be able to loosen right up easily without a problem. All right, so those two into the canner. And I have a few more to go and I will bring you back once I have the canner full and we'll talk about processing times and what we need to do. So my canner has a V to line up to lock the lid in place and you kind of give it a twist. And once that was done, I turned up the heat and we're going to wait on the steam to start and I'll bring you back once that happens. We are back and this is venting a steady stream of pressure. I'm not sure that you can see it, but it is a steady stream of pressure. So what we are going to do is we are going to set our timer for 10 minutes and we are going to let this vent for 10 minutes. Okay, I'm back and the timer has gone off. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put my regulator on. Now I use a weighted regulator. It just comes in three pieces and the base is five pounds. The, and then each ring that fits on it is an additional five pounds. And for my altitude, I can at 10 pounds weighted. You just set the regulator on just like that. So it's very important that you can correct pressure for your altitude and I will leave a link in the description below for a website where you can get the altitude for your address. So we're going to let this come up to pressure and it will start to jiggle and once it's there uh, we'll come back. Okay, I'm back and we are up to pressure and the jiggler, is, the regulator is jiggling so it will hold a really good pressure. I'm going to turn it down. I'm a little high. I'm going to turn it down. My sweet spot is just about medium low and I'm going to set a timer. Now I'm doing pints of broth so I'm going to let this run for 20 minutes and then I'm going to shut it off and let it come down naturally and you'll know that the pressure is down and it's safe to open when this lock drops. Okay, so you can see that the lock has dropped. That indicates that it is completely down from pressure. I'm going to remove my regulator and I am going to open the lid. Now, you want to do this carefully. You want to always open away from you because there is still plenty of steam in there. So you want to make sure that you open away. So using the jar lifter, you want to make sure that you lift straight up. There's water on the top and there is an urge to tilt it to drain that water off, but you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you keep them straight up. And this beautiful golden ham hock broth is just bubbling away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them out and I'm going to set them on a towel. This is my canning towel. Um, it's folded up and it sits on my counter. You don't want to set a hot jar directly onto the counter. It's just um, not a good idea. It can shock it, a temperature shock, and it can cause your jars to break. So I'm going to take them out and I'm going to leave them sitting for about 24 hours. So tomorrow evening I will come back and I will take off the rings and I will check the seals and I will wash the jars and I will label them and put them in the pantry.
So what we have here is a beautiful jar of ham hock broth still bubbling away. It's absolutely beautiful. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did I would ask that you please give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy this kind of video please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified anytime I upload a new video. I encourage you to leave a comment below. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer it. And if I don't have an answer, I'll see if I can help you find a resource to get an answer from. Thank you so much for watching, and you have a blessed day.